We are live now. Um, we're going to give it another 15 seconds. Good afternoon. My name is Charlene Garcia Sims, and I'm the Genealogy and Special Collections Librarian here at Rawlings. And we have a very uh, special video presentation that one of our local heroes produced. Uh, George Ottoby is not only descended of the historical and pioneer family of Pueblo, the Ottobies, but he is also a veteran who was in the Vietnam War, and uh, he was wounded twice in combat, for which he received, you know, some medals. And I want to say that next week. At five o'clock on October 21st, uh, right here, we will be doing a, a presentation on George's book called Marine Grant to Medic. And he will tell us about his experience in, in Vietnam. And please uh, make sure that you join us. And um, today we are going to show Los Veteranos about Hispanics in the military and George uh, produced it. And he's gonna talk about the video and why he produced it. So, uh, George, please join us, and um, I'll turn it over to you. Hi, my name is George Otterby. Served as a Lance Corporal in Vietnam, 68-69, 3rd Battalion, 5th Marines, 1st Marine Division. One of the reasons I did this video is because I had seen a lack of documentation in reference to Latino veterans, Chicano veterans, Mexicanos, not being portrayed in any type of uh, video or documentary. It seemed like we're being passed over there's very few books out about the uh, service that our veterans, Latino veterans, Hispanic veterans, not very much out there. I was working with Telemundo, Channel 59 up in Denver, and had a great crew with me. And I was also with the uh, genealogical, Hispanic Genealogical Society out in Denver. And uh, we sat down and wrote a proposal to the state of Colorado to see if we can do a documentary on uh, Latino veterans. And I titled it Los Veteranos. We have seen a need to have this type of program out there to document and show what we have done as Latinos in combat and our service to our country. The documentary opens up, when we're talking about the American GI Forum. I had the opportunity to work with the American GI Forum in their national office in Washington DC for five years. I loved every minute. I got to learn the history, and I would hope that you viewers would be able to see your local GI Forum chapter and hopefully join, because it's an awesome organization and they're fighting for Hispanic veterans' rights. It was started with Dr. Garcia many years ago after Second World War, and the battle continues in regards to veterans trying to get their rights, especially the rights of the veterans that have been deported. That's a whole issue in itself. I dedicate this film to our community and I dedicate it to our veterans so that we can tell the story of the accomplishments of our community or our veterans. The, the documentary goes on to talk about the Medal of Honor recipients, the Hispanic Medal of Honor recipients from back to the Civil War, um, First, Second World War, Korea, Vietnam. And we try to bring we try to bring it up to date. Uh, in fact, the program and um, a lot of the program has talks about the not only the veterans from the um, Vietnam War, but also from Iraq and, and Iran. We had just uh, Desert Storm had just started when we did the video back in nineteen, uh, I think it was ninety four. We were hoping to update it to show what's been going on since. Um, we again, as veterans, have an obligation to document our history. 
I know it's tough for a lot of people to go back, a lot of these veterans to go back and talk about it because it brings up a lot of memories and it becomes very emotional. But we still had a responsibility. In this video, we talk about not only the Medal of Honor recipients, the Hispanic Medal of Honor recipients, but we also talk about the um, way to preserve the history of these veterans in regards to their uniforms, their medals, their uh, writings, their photographs. That's the reason I wrote the book, uh, my book, uh, Marine Grunt to Medic, is because I wanted to document for my family the history of our family over seven generations in the United States participating in the military. Um, these are things that our community needs to know. We have to be empowered so we know what our history is, so that when people question us, they know that we've been here for centuries and we have paid the price in blood for freedom and we should have be treated the same as any other person here in the United States. So it's with that, I wanna share this documentary with you and I would hope you would be able to follow up in interviewing anybody in your family that's a veteran and has not been interviewed, any photos they may have, put them together in a scrapbook because we need to maintain the history and documentation of these veterans. Get a copy of their discharge form, get a copy of them in uniform. But by you doing that, you've taken an extra step so that you could show our children and grandchildren the price that we paid in reference to our freedom. So with that, I thank you and I look forward to having, hopefully having you enjoy the documentary and look forward to seeing you again next week when we talk about the book, um, Marine Corps Grunt to Medic. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. the lady who is the American GI Forum National Chairwoman Alma Riojas Esparza, who is a member of the American GI Forum chapter in Washington, D.C. Alma. Buenos dias. It's a real pleasure to be here to represent one of the greatest organizations in this country. 
I was surprised to talk to a few people this morning and yesterday who were not quite familiar with the American GI Forum. Just for your information, our organization will be 50 years old next year. And it was organized through the efforts of Dr. Hector Garcia, who when he returned from World War II found that Mexican American veterans primarily were not getting the services that they had earned as veterans of this country. Following the death of Felix Longoria, and when his body was returned to the United States for burial, the city of Three Rivers, Texas, refused to have his body lay in the city mortuary and to be buried in the city cemetery because he was Mexican American. Following that, there was a tremendous uprising amongst the Hispanic community, and the whole issue was that if you're good enough to serve your country and die for it, and yet you come back home and you cannot be buried in the same cemetery, there is something very wrong. That really started a civil rights movement of Mexican Americans really working for the rights of men and women who had served their country and who deserved to have the recognition that they had earned. At this time, there are 1.2 million Hispanic veterans. And I'd like to think that those men and women who have served their country are very much represented by men and women like the Uriosi brothers. I just found out that five of the brothers in the family have over 125 years of military service just amongst them. My name is Elmer D. Uh, Montano. On some camps, it's called Montano. Uh, I was born in Colorado. I grew up in the wonderful city of Denver. Was educated through the Denver Public Schools and the University of Denver. Later became uh, a lawyer. Uh, I live in Costa Mesa, California, and uh, I've lived there for 30 some years. I have four children, of, uh, of which I am very proud. Uh, all of them have graduated from college and uh, are well on their way to raising uh, some very nice families. Uh, I have been involved in genealogy for some time, and I am a proud member of the Hispanic Genealogy Society of America. I believe that one of the greatest duties and responsibilities we have in life is to help children develop a strong sense of responsibility to themselves, their families, their country, and their community, so that that responsibility can serve them well throughout their lives. Toward that end, those of us with an Hispanic background have to help create in our children a strong belief in the value of family community and country and assure them that they have a rightful place in this society. Further, I believe that there is an important and positive lesson to be learned about responsibility and belonging from the Hispanic, women, Hispanic men and women who served in the military service of our country. Those involved in teaching children, whether they be parents, teachers, family members, and yes, even genealogists, should use the information about the contributions made to our country by these Hispanic men and women. These contributions have been significant and are very relevant to, the, to an Hispanic child's struggle with his or her feelings about responsibility and belonging. The objective being to create a healthy outlook on responsibility and fully define the child's place in the society. Members of our extended Hispanic family have served in the U.S. military for generations with loyalty, patriotism, and gallantry. They made great sacrifices and without question more than fulfilled their responsibilities as citizens. Of the thousands and thousands who served, many made the supreme sacrifice of giving their life for their country, the ultimate contribution. All who served are heroes but those who gave their lives are special by any definition. Most of us have heroes. They play an important part in our lives. Some of these heroes are those who served in the military service. 
children should know about heroes who are from their extended family, heroes they may not have heard about or even knew existed. Knowing about them and what they did can go a long way in developing pride and creating a strong identity with their country. It seems to me that as we near the end of this century, it is an appropriate time to remember, recognize, and learn more about those who served in the wars that took place in this century. Further, I believe that those of us with an Hispanic background should learn as much as possible about, about those who served the call of duty from the Hispanic community. Although materials have been written, much more needs to be told about those who served in World War I, World War II, the Korean War, Vietnam, and the Persian Gulf War. Those of us involved in genealogy have some of that responsibility. Today, it is impossible to mention all who served and at best, all we can do is introduce some of them to you and tell you about them. Representative of those who served in World War I were men like Nicolas Lucero, age 19, from Albuquerque, New Mexico, who was decorated with the French Croix de Guerre, and David Barclay from Laredo, Texas, who was awarded the Medal of Honor posthumously for his heroic deeds in France. In World War II, from its very beginning, Hispanic soldiers serving in the New Mexico National Guard stationed in the Philippines began fighting the Japanese on December the 8th, 1941, the day after the attack on Pearl Harbor. After fighting gallantly, they were captured by an overwhelming force and were forcibly subjected to the cruel and infamous Bataan Death March. Many died in prisoner of war camps. The list of these soldiers is full of Spanish surnames, names like Armijo, Garcia, Apodaca, Gonzalez, Lopez, Rivera, Gutierrez, Vejil, and the name go and the list goes on and on. Out of the 130,832 men and women from Colorado who served in the military service in World War II, three soldiers were awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. One was Private Jose P. Martinez. He was born in Taos, New Mexico, and later with his family moved to Alt, Colorado. He came to Denver on August 17, 1942 to enlist in the Army, and nine months later, on May 26, 1943, at age 21, was killed in action fighting the enemy in Attu on the Aleutian Islands. For his deeds on that day, he was awarded the highest military honor, the Congressional Medal of Honor. There were others like Private Martinez who were also awarded the Medal of Honor. Some included were Macario Garcia of Sugarland, Texas, Jose Lopez of Brownsville, Texas, Jose Valdez of Gobernador, New Mexico, Silvestre Herrera of Phoenix, Arizona, Manuel Perez of Chicago, Illinois, Clito Rodriguez of San Antonio, Texas, Ismael Villegas of Casablanca, California, David Gonzalez of Pacoima, California, and Alejandro Reese from Loving, New Mexico. Many of these men died in that terrible war and came home in flag-draped flag coffins, while others came home forever marred by its devastating fury. For example, when Silvestre Herrera went to Washington, D.C. to be presented with the Medal of Honor by President Truman, Mr. Herrera was unable to stand to accept his medal because he had left his legs in a battlefield somewhere in France. These men, like most ordinary GIs, probably knew very little about the complex issues that caused the war, but they were patriotic, loyal, and without question committed themselves to the horrors of war because it was the right thing to do for their country. Later came the Korean conflict and this war too reached into the Latino population. And as in World War II, men and women from this community responded and went off to war and served with great distinction. As in previous war, some were awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. For example, Staff Sergeant Ambrosio Guillen, born in La Junta, Colorado, was awarded the medal as a result of his heroic deeds on July 25th, 1953. On that day, this young Marine, age 23, 
while in the defense of an outpost forward of the main battle line, led his platoon in hand-to-hand -hand combat against the enemy, and although critically wounded, refused medical aid and continued the battle until the enemy was defeated. A few hours after the battle, he succumbed to the wounds he had received. The Medal of Honor citation reads in part that his personal valor reflects the highest credit upon himself and enhances the finest traditions of the U.S. Naval Service. He gallantly gave his life for his country. Next came Vietnam, a complicated war that is still difficult to explain. But whether or not they fully understood what it was all about, our, we, our Hispanic young men and women answered the call to duty. And though they represented 10% of the total forces in Vietnam, they suffered 20% of the total casualties. A grim reminder of this war is the Vietnam War Memorial in Washington, D.C. The experience of seeing this wall is like no other. When one sees all those thousands of names etched on that black background, names representing Americans, families from all over the nation, one cannot help but imagine and feel some of the grief and pain that must have been and is still being experienced by the families of those whose names appear on it. There is no shortage of Spanish surnames etched on it. They appear by the hundreds and hundreds. For example, the name Garcia appears 102 times, Gonzalez 86 times, Lopez 58 times, Martinez 75 times, Rodriguez 81 times. And although Montaño is not a very common Spanish surname, it even is represented with five names. As in the previous wars, in Vietnam too, Spanish surname soldiers were awarded the Medal of Honor for their gallant deeds. A total of 13 received this highest of honors. Sadly, eight of these were awarded their medal posthumously. Their citations recount heroic actions that are beyond the imagination. I believe no one joins the military to win the Medal of Honor. The Medal of Honor is, best is bestowed upon a person who, when in the face of great danger, totally disregards his own safety and exposes his life to death so that others may live. Those Hispanic Medal of Honor recipients who died while performing the Selfish Act and whose names appear on the Vietnam Wall are Emilio de la Garza, Ralph Diaz, Daniel Fernandez, Alfredo Gonzalez, Euripides Rubio, Hector Santiago Colon, and Maximo Yaves. For example, the citation for Daniel Fernandez reads as follows. Citation for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty, Specialist Fourth Class Fernandez demonstrated indomitable courage when the patrol was ambushed by a Viet Cong rifle company and driven back by the intense enemy automatic weapons fire before it could evacuate an American soldier who had been wounded in the Viet Cong attack. Specialist Fourth Class Fernandez, a sergeant, and two others volunteers immediately fought their way through the devastating fire and exploding hand grenades to reach the fallen soldier. Upon reaching their fallen comrade, the sergeant was struck in the knee by machine gun fire and immobilized. Specialist Fourth Class Fernandez took charge, rallied the left flank of this patrol, and began to assist in the recovery of the wounded sergeant. While first aid was being administered to the wounded man, a sudden increase in the accuracy and intensity of enemy fire forced the volunteer group to take cover. As they did, an enemy hand grenade landed in the midst of the group, although some men did not see it. Realizing there was no time for the wounded sergeant or the other men to protect themselves from the grenade blast, Specialist Fourth Class Fernandez vaulted over the wounded sergeant and threw himself on the grenade as it exploded, saving the lives of his four comrades at the sacrifice. Specialist Fourth Class Fernandez's profound concern for his fellow soldiers at the risk of his life above duty are in the highest tradition of the U.S. Army and reflect great credit upon himself and the armed forces of the United States. The study of war is interesting and its causes in some cases are greatly debated. Such was the war in the Persian Gulf. 
And, though, and although this war was only of short duration, it too brought pain and sadness into the lives of many American families. Such was the case of the Galvan family from my community of Costa Mesa, California. Their son, Captain Art Galvan, a schoolmate of my son, while flying in an attack airplane over enemy territory, was shot down and he and the crew were killed somewhere over Iraq in the war called Desert Zone. In my mind, there is no greater sacrifice anyone can make than to give his or her life for their country. Additionally, a family can make no greater showing of responsibility and contribution to their country than to offer the life of a loved one to the horrible dangers of war. By teaching our children about the contributions and sacrifices made by persons like the ones mentioned here today, we can help create within our children a strong identity with their country and develop within themselves a sense of great pride, which has the, which has the effect of giving powerful meaning to the words, I am an American. And when they sing the Star Spangled Banner and say the words, or the land of the free and the home of the brave, they should know that they are singing about their land and about the brave and courageous millions of heroes, including their Hispanic brothers and sisters, who served unselfishly with great distinction and valor so that we could enjoy our freedom. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
great-grandfather, Sergeant Jose Miguel Vasquez, was a volunteer in the 1st Regiment Company E, New Mexico Cavalry, during the Civil War. He served from, the, from August 9, 1861 to August 1864. He was engaged in many battles against the Texans, Confederates, and Indians. He fought under the well-known soldier, Major Rafael Chocon. They served under the command of Kit Carson. Sergeant Jose Miguel is buried next to the San Jose Adobe, Adobe Catholic Church in Garner, Colorado, near Trinidad. Two other soldiers are also buried there. I, John Vasquez Jr., served in World War, War II as a staff sergeant in the U.S. Army Air Force. I was a flight engineer gunner on a B-24 bomber, had many bomb missions into Germany, Yugoslavia, Czechoslovakia, and many other places in Europe. I was very fortunate not to have any injuries during my service. I was discharged from the service on October 1945 at Lowry Air Force Base in Denver, Colorado. My name is Shirley Clayton, and my family has a very long history of military service. My mother was Teodosia Garcia. Her family, the Garcias, were among the first soldiers to enter New Mexico. Both of my great-grandfathers were in the Civil War, and other Garcias were in the Spanish-American War. In my immediate family, my dad, Joseph Wood, served three enlistments in the U.S. Cavalry before and during World War I. Between 1944 and 1950, five of my brothers entered the service, three in the Marine Corps and two in the Navy. My oldest brother, Paul, was killed on Iwo Jima and received the Purple Heart. My brother, Joseph, uh, second brother, was received the Purple Heart for wounds received on Okinawa. My youngest brother, Dean, was also wounded in Korea. Dexter and James were also in Korea. My husband, Frank Clayton, served in the Marines, both in World War II and in Korea. Thank you. 